Testing one, two, testing one, two. Testing one, two, testing one, two.
Please stand. Listen, Lord, and answer me. Save your servant who trusts in you. I call to you all day long. Have mercy on me, O Lord. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, Amen. the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, and the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Amen. Brothers and sisters, let us acknowledge our sins, and so prepare ourselves to celebrate the sacred mysteries. You were sent to hell with God's God apart. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. You came to call sinners. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace to people of good will. We praise you, we bless you, we adore you, we glorify you. We give you thanks for your great glory. Lord God, Heavenly King, O God, Almighty Father, Lord Jesus Christ, Only Begotten Son, Lord God, Lamb of God, Son of the Father, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. You take away the sins of the world, receive our prayer. You are seated at the right hand of the Father, have mercy on us. For you alone are the Holy One, you alone are the Lord, you alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit, in the glory of God the Father. Amen. Let us pray. Father, help us to seek the values that will bring us lasting joy in this changing world. In our desire for what you promise, make us one in mind and heart. Grant this through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the book of the prophet Isaiah. Thus says the Lord to Shebna, master of the palace, I will thrust you from your office and pull you down from your station. On that day, I will summon my servant Eliakim, son of Hilkiah. I will clothe him with your robe and gird him with your sash and give over to him your authority. He shall be a father to the inhabitants of Jerusalem and to the house of Judah. I will place the key of the house of David on Eliakim's shoulder. When he opens, no one shall shut. When he shuts, no one shall open. I will fix him like a peg in a sure spot to be a place of honor for his family. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Responsorial Psalm. Lord, your love is eternal. Do not forsake the work of your hands. Lord, Lord your, your love, love is, eternal. is eternal. Do, Do not, not forsake, forsake the, the work, work of your of hands. Your hand. I will give thanks to you, O Lord, with all my heart, for you have heard the words of my mouth. In the presence of the angels, I will sing your praise. I will worship at your holy temple. Lord, Lord your, your love, love is eternal. eternal. Do, Do not, not forsake, forsake the work, work of, of your, your hands. hands. I will give thanks to your name because of your kindness and your truth. When I called, you answered me. You built up strength within me. Lord, your, your love, love is eternal. eternal. 
Do not not forsake forsake the the work work of of your your hands. The Lord is exalted, yet the lowly he sees, and the proud he knows from afar. Your kindness, O Lord, endures forever. Forsake not the work of your hands. Lord, Lord, your your love love is eternal. eternal. Do not Not forsake forsake the the work work of your your hands. hands. A reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Romans. Oh, the depth of the riches and wisdom and knowledge of God. How inscrutable are his judgments and how unsearchable his ways. For who has known the mind of the Lord or who has been his counselor? Or who has given the Lord anything that he may be repaid? For him and through him and for him are all things. To him be glory forever. Amen. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Nick, may the Lord be in your heart and on your lips that you might worthily and fittingly proclaim the gospel. May God bless you, Father, Son, Holy Spirit. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. Glory to you, O Lord. Jesus went into the region of Caesarea Philippi, and he asked his disciples, Who do people say that the Son of Man is? They replied, Some say John the Baptist, others Elijah, still others Jeremiah, or one of the prophets. He said to them, But who do you say that I am? Simon Peter said in reply, You are the Christ, the Son of the living God. Jesus said to him in reply, Blessed are you, Simon, son of Jonah, for flesh and blood has not revealed this to you, but my heavenly Father. And so I say to you, you are Peter, and upon this rock I will build my church, and the gates of the netherworld shall not prevail against it. I will give you the keys to the kingdom of heaven. Whatever you bind on earth shall be bound in heaven, and whatever you loose on earth shall be loosed in heaven. Then he strictly ordered his disciples to tell no one that he was the Christ. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. This is a a new checking to see if with the new camera, they felt I'm safer down here on the floor where if I misstep, I won't fall off the steps. So Ken, am I safe? All right, good, thank you. The Wednesday night group, my challenge group, that we meet by Zoom, and now I will, those of you who know me, Every Wednesday, Libby sets my computer up where all I have to do is hit join and attend that Zoom meeting. The the book we're using, City of Prayer, it's written by an ordained Presbyterian minister, but she is also an oblate of St. Benedict. It's also subtitled 40 Days with the early church. 
40 days with the desert mothers and fathers. And each day, each chapter, if you will, begins with a quote from one of the early desert mothers or fathers. And then she gives her reflection on it. I was struck this past week because one of the, the quotes from the, the fathers and then her commentary on it, she said she had given a, a homily and one of her parishioners said to her afterwards, boy, you were preaching right to me. Where do you get the ideas for your sermons? And she replied, from the scriptures. And her parishioner said, oh, come on. Where do you really get the ideas? And she said, you know, I'm, I'm afraid that we have a lot of people who somehow think that the Bible doesn't deal with human life experiences, that it deals with these deep, weighty things that you need an expert to help you wade through to get something out of. And she said, but no. It's about human experiences. And it continues to touch our human experiences even today. That reading from the prophet Isaiah this morning. Isaiah was probably set during that time of the Assyrian siege of Jerusalem, which failed. The city was spared. But Isaiah was very upset with the people of God who did not understand that they were brought to the brink of destruction by their sins, by their not living the covenant had been made with God. Shebna, the chief steward, evidently was one of those led one of the parties there at the time in Jerusalem that was lobbying to create a military alliance with Egypt against the Assyrians rather than listening to the prophet Isaiah and trusting in God. Shebna is one of the few that Isaiah gives an individual oracle of doom to. Seems partially to what Isaiah was so annoyed with Shebna about was the luxury of the lifestyle that he lived, even to the extreme of having a very lavish tomb created for himself when he was supposed to be taking care of the people. When Isaiah says to Eliakim, you will be a father to the people. That's what Shebna was supposed to be, but instead he was only looking out for himself. And Isaiah says to him, you will be thrust from office. And not only that, Isaiah says to him, Oh, and by the way, you know that lavish tomb that you created so that everyone could acknowledge your greatness, your body won't rest in it. So, human nature is what it is. And the scriptures speak as strongly today as they did in that day. And Shebna is thrust out of office for his arrogance and his lavish lifestyle, for his lack of care for the poor. But we go from his arrogance to Paul's humility in that letter to the Romans. Remember I mentioned last week, Paul had been wrestling with this question that was hard for him as to why so many of his own people did not accept Jesus and the gospel. And Paul finally realizes, because Paul is a bright individual, 
you know, earlier in one of his other letters, Paul mentions the, his educational credentials as far as being educated in the scriptures, in the faith. And Paul says, I'm at a loss. My human limitations cannot give me an answer to that question, why? But I do know that everything comes from God, everything has its being because of God, and everything is directed toward God. So I may not be able to understand fully the mystery of salvation. But what I can understand is the mercy and the love of God and the wisdom of God and that I can trust in God's wisdom and God's plan. And Paul asked all of us to do the same, to trust in the wisdom of God, trust in the plan of God. Today's gospel reading set in that area of Caesarea Philippi. Now that area is what is now up in the northern part of Israel, right next to the border of Lebanon. I was able to visit there on a pilgrimage and I have enough Lebanese friends that I wanna get as close as I can. So I did get to the gate that set over it, you know, Lebanon. And someone in the group said, oh, go ahead, just put your toe in and you can say you've been to Lebanon. And I said, yeah, and those cameras up there are going to see my toe going in. I'm happy to just be in front of the sign. That'll be enough. Caesarea Philippi. That was one of the headwaters of the Jordan River. Now, the Jordan is so important to the history of Israel. But it was also the location of the Roman temple to the god Pan, who was the god of all nature and all. Also, there were several other smaller shrines to different gods and goddesses. And there was probably a shrine there to the Roman emperor as divine. The city was rebuilt by Herod's son, Philip. And after he rebuilt it, he, renamed, he named it, not the old name the city had, but he gave it a new name, Caesarea Philippi, naming it after the Roman emperor and himself. So in that region, with, with all these other religious symbols around, Matthew's gospel places these two questions that Jesus raises. Who do people say that I am? Who do you say that I am? Two very different questions. The first question is a very general question. The second, a very specific question. In answer to the first question, who do people say the Son of Man is? The disciples say, well, some people say that you're John the Baptist, come back from the dead. Others say that you're Elijah because the prophet Elijah was expected to return. Remember, Elijah was carried off in a fiery chariot. Is expected to return to usher in the age of the Messiah. Some say Jeremiah because Matthew's gospel compares Jesus to Jeremiah on a number of occasions. Or still one of the other prophets. The harder question but who do you say that I am? And we hear that response from Peter. You are the Christ, the Son of the living God. Peter speaking for the group. Now, with that response, Jesus responds to Peter and says, Blessed are you, Simon, son of Jonah, Flesh and blood has not revealed this to you. Flesh and blood was a way of saying the whole human person. And so saying, 
Peter, you didn't come to this on your own. This is a revelation from the Father. There's no way you could have humanly figured this out. This was gift. This was revelation. And I say to you, you are Peter, and on this rock I will build my church. Now, that is one of only two places in Matthew's gospel where the word church is used. Probably used here to separate the disciples from the synagogue. That they are a different group now by the time Matthew's gospel is written. Separate. But it was also similar to the phrase that the Qumran community used to describe their assembly. Now remember the Qumran community, they fled Jerusalem for what they said was the corruption of temple worship and the priesthood and went and established their community in the desert by the Dead Sea in a place called Qumran. But the question, and Peter, whatever you bind will be bound, what you loose will be loosed. Going back to Eliakim, what you open, no one can shut, what you shut, no one can open. That sense of passing on the key, the authority, of position of responsibility. Peter, and the gates of the underworld shall not prevail against it. Now, that question is as relevant and as important today as it was when Matthew's gospel was written. How we answer the question, who do you say that I am? causes us to ask ourselves, what do we mean when we say, I believe in Jesus Christ, the Son of God, the Savior? Because how we answer that is important. Because if we understand who Jesus is and the gospel that he gives us, then it calls us to say, then how am I to live my life? It's a question that we don't ask just once and say, okay, I've answered that one, now I can move on. It's a question that we ask continually because how we answer that question should affect every decision we make. Every decision we make should reflect whether or not we truly believe that Jesus is the Son of God, the Messiah, the Savior. Every decision we make to love family and friends is a response to that question. Every decision we make to commit ourselves to justice is a response to that question. Every decision we make to stand for moral, high moral and ethical standards is a response to that question. Every act of kindness, every act of charity is a response to that question. Or better, an affirmation of our belief in how we answer the question, who do you say that I am? And so we continue today, grateful for that gift of the word and asking for that grace that we need to allow the Lord to continually put that question to us every day, asking us to reflect to our decisions reflect our belief that Jesus truly is the Son of God, the Messiah, and belief in the gospel that he gave us.
I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, consubstantial with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us men and for our salvation, he came down from heaven, and by the Holy Spirit was incarnate of the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried and rose again on the third day in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy, Catholic, and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. And I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Mindful of God's constant love and care in our own lives, we pause to make known our needs and the needs of all our sisters and brothers. The church leaders and faithful believers Practice charity and patience with one another. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. The temporal rulers and civil leaders resist temptation and root out corruption. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. <clears throat> that those who know the gift of friendship and marriage remain constant in love through every trial. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That those separated by death from those they love take comfort in the promise of the resurrection. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That this community be healed of every division. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For a just and lasting peace throughout the whole Middle East, and especially in the Holy Land, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer for an increase in vocations to the priesthood, diaconate, religious life, and good Christian marriage, especially from our parish family, and for those who serve the Lord in the single state, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the silent needs in our hearts, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Loving Father, we come before you grateful that you have called us as disciples of your Son. Strengthen us that all of our decisions bear witness to our trust in his gospel, for he lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the bread we offer you, fruit of the earth and work of human hands. It will become for us the bread of life.
Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the wine we offer you, fruit of the vine and work of human hands. It will become our spiritual drink. Pray, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. O Lord, who gained for yourself a people by adoption through the one sacrifice offered once for all, bestow graciously on us the gifts of unity and peace in your church. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. With you Lift up your hearts. Up the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is, right and just. it is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God. For in you we live and move and have our being. And while in this body, we not only experience the daily effects of your care, but even now possess the pledge of life eternal. For having received the first fruits of the Spirit, to whom you raised up Jesus from the dead, we hope for an everlasting share in the Paschal mystery. And so, with all the angels, we praise you. As in joyful celebration, we acclaim, Holy, 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 Lord God of hosts. Heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord, and all you have created rightly gives you praise. For through your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, by the power and working of the Holy Spirit, you give life to all things and make them holy. And you never cease to gather a people to yourself, so that from the rising of the sun to its setting, a pure sacrifice may be offered to your name. Therefore, O Lord, we humbly implore you by the same Spirit, graciously make holy these gifts we have brought to you for consecration that they may become the body and blood of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, at whose command we celebrate these mysteries. For on the night he was betrayed, he himself took bread. And giving you thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread, gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice. And giving you thanks, he said the blessing, gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith, when we eat this bread and drink this cup, we proclaim your death, O Lord, until you come again. <clears throat> Therefore, O Lord, as we celebrate the memorial of the saving passion of your Son, his wondrous resurrection and ascension into heaven, and as we look forward to his second coming, we offer you in thanksgiving this holy and living sacrifice. Look, we pray, 
upon the oblation of your church and recognizing the sacrificial victim by whose death you will to reconcile us to yourself. Grant that we who are nourished by the body and blood of your Son and filled with his Holy Spirit may become one body, one spirit in Christ. May he make of us an eternal offering to you so that we may obtain an inheritance with your elect especially with the most blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, St. Joseph, her spouse, the blessed apostles, the glorious martyrs, St. Rose of Lima, and all the saints, on whose constant intercession in your presence we rely for unfailing help. May the sacrifice of our reconciliation, we pray, O Lord, advance the peace and salvation of all the world. Be pleased to confirm in faith and charity your pilgrim church on earth with your servant Francis, our Pope, and Richard, our Bishop, the Order of Bishops, all the clergy, and the entire people you have gained for your own. Listen graciously to the prayers of this family whom you have summoned before you. In your compassion, O merciful Father, gather to yourself all your children scattered throughout the world. To our departed brothers and sisters, and to all who were pleasing to you at their passing from this life, Give kind admittance to your kingdom. There we hope to enjoy forever the fullness of your glory through Christ our Lord, through whom you bestow on the world all that is good. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. At the Savior's command and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. Let us all go on the side of peace. Lamb of God, Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed.
and would remind you our new, new normal. We begin communion in the front on the right-hand side, going all the way back. Then we start in the back on the left, coming forward. That allows us to practice social distancing. You may either use the hand sanitizer that you brought with you from home or use the one up here. Make the body of Christ. Fill us the body of Christ. Mary the body of Christ. Carl the body of Christ. Mitchell the body of Christ. And the body of Christ. And the body of Christ. Or the body of Christ. The body of Christ. The body of Christ. In the body of Christ. The body of Christ. The body of Christ. May the Lord bless you, keep you in his peace and in corrupt forever. Just for the body of Christ. David, may the Lord bless you, keep you always in his peace and love. Kevin, the body of Christ. Over the body of Christ. We may the Lord bless and keep you always in his peace and in his love. Katie, the body of Christ. Abigail, may the Lord bless and keep you always in his peace and in his love. It was the body of Christ. Lend the body of Christ. All the body of Christ. First, the body of Christ. Lorraine, the body of Christ. Jack, the body of Christ. Kevin, the body of Christ. For those not able to make it here today. My Jesus, I believe that you are present in the most holy sacrament. I love you above all things, and I desire to receive you into my soul. Since I cannot at this moment receive you sacramentally, come at least spiritually into my heart. 
I embrace you as if you are already there and unite myself wholly to you. Never permit me to be separated from you. Amen. Let us pray. Complete within us, O Lord, the healing work of your mercy, and graciously perfect and sustain us, so that in all things we may please you. We ask this through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. May Almighty God bless you and keep you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Be merciful that the Father in heaven is merciful. And so in peace. Thanks Amen. be to God. I will add a little addenda to the homily. Besides those cameras there at the border of Lebanon and Israel that were watching, I also knew Sister Albertine was watching. <laughs> yeah. And she always stresses the importance of setting a good example for all the other pilgrims. And I knew I had to get back on the bus with her. Our prayer to St. Michael. St. Michael, the archangel, defend us in battle. Be our defense against the wickedness and snares of the devil. Rebuke him, we humbly pray. And do thou, O Prince of the heavenly host, by the power of God, thrust into hell Satan and all the evil spirits who prowl about the world, seeking the ruin of souls. Amen. Would remind you, too, of our new normal. We ask you to leave the kneeler down where you are so that the volunteers know what to disinfect after Mass. And that we start exiting from the back and coming forward, and the usher will pass out the bulletins on your way out.